This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. First and exclusive, it's the Discovery Sport from Land Rover on CNB. And we look at the Grand Cherokee. Hello everyone and welcome to CNB, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from all of us at NDTV and the Car and Bike Show team. Thanks for joining us for this brand new episode. It's also a special one, our Christmas New Year special, very aptly coming to you from here, the winter wonderland in Iceland. Yes, it's the first time we brought you here and it's for a nice exclusive review of the Discovery Sport. You've got a glimpse of the car already. You've also had little bits of it we've shared with you from the Paris Motor Show and so you know what it looks like, you know some of the new features, but how does it drive? Well, this is the kind of place you really get to test the car and I'm looking forward to bringing all of that to you starting now. The car that will be crucial for Land Rover as it looks to up its game in 2015. Yes, this is a volumes model and I am in Iceland to test it. It's the land of undulating hills, volcanoes, fjords and lava rock. But wait, the Iceland I landed in was, well, a bit icier and the day started very dark, though not very early. Get to nicely drift things up here on the ice and uh, well, that's what it is. It's not really just snow anymore. It's nicely compacted down overnight and it has a nice icy feel to it, the road surface. Uh, the good part was that we got a little bit of an introduction to all of this last night because when we landed into uh, Reykjavik, we actually drove to the hotel a couple of hours so got used to the conditions, got used to the darkness as well and uh, can't wait for the day to unfold ahead of me. Yes, it's a special day all right. We have the first and exclusive review of this car for you. The Discovery Sport is built on a modified Range Rover Evoque platform 20% of its structure is made of high-strength boron steel that's more than any Land Rover and many of the Land Rover staples on it have been updated. Well, there's absolutely perfect conditions to check out the new updated terrain response system, especially the grass, gravel, snow setting. Now, for the most part it is just snow but uh, we're driving over some gravelly bits as well and every now and then it gets exposed you can feel a little crunch of that gravel beneath the, the wheels and uh, it's lava gravel so it's a little bit different in its texture I'm told for the most part though like I said it is snow uh, the quick thing I want to mention here though is that unlike the Range Rover family where the terrain response system also has the auto setting on this car it's not available so what you have is just the everyday function got the mud and ruts, you've got the grass, gravel, snow or sand, so you've got to select that, the car won't do it for you. Land Rover says the car's hill descent control system is now three times faster than before and all variants feature start-stop as standard. 
we drove far into the Icelandic countryside and let me tell you it was stunning. We also got lucky as it was getting fairly bright and wasn't snowing anymore. Now don't be fooled by this, it looks nice and calm and it's gotten nice and bright as well but it's still about minus 8 or 9 degrees and uh, yeah the sun's just starting to come out over the horizon there behind me. It's 12 noon so uh, well that's a nice time for it to come up isn't it? But the point about not being fooled by the conditions around me, well that's something that we've been warned about right since the minute we got here. They say that the weather could turn on you any second and last night we got a sense of that because Right now you can see the road that we're on, but there are times when it completely disappears on you and which is why it's very crucial to keep a track of these things. These markers are placed along the road every few meters and uh, they're reflective. They're also nice and yellow. The headlamp always catches them, even if there's snow getting thrown around and whipped around you. You keep getting a sense of where you have to go by looking at those and which is why by law here in Iceland when you're driving, you have to keep your headlights on, not just the daytime running lights, but your headlights and it doesn't matter what time of the day or night and uh, that's also relative because at this time of the year you only get about four hours of daylight. The cabin of the Discovery Sport is a lot roomier than the Freelander 2's. The design is sharp and while the material quality is good, it doesn't exude a luxurious feel. And that's intentional as this is the versatile workhorse. Luxury is the preserve of the Range Rover family. The dash has a touchscreen infotainment system and all the buttons and switches are easy to read and use. The Discovery Sport has also got the third row of seats which fold up and down easily and even the second row can be folded for additional cargo needs. The ground clearance on this vehicle is 212 millimeters, which uh, Land Rover says is best in class. And also, you've got a 600 millimeter wading capability. Again, the company says that is the best in the segment. So let's put that claim to the test. We've got the car and we've got a little river back there. Let's go do this. Oh, this is the fun stuff. The car has an axle articulation of 320 millimeters, and like all Land Rovers, this car also has the appropriate approach angle of 25 degrees and a departure angle of 31 degrees to afford better climbing and wading capabilities than its rivals. Now this car does have sport at the end of its name which means that it promises to be substantially different in how it drives compared to the Freelander 2 especially. But we're not going to be testing that on any kind of smooth tarmac today, that's for sure, you can see that, right? What I can tell you though is that we've been riding on these special studded tyres. It does change the ride quality somewhat, it becomes a little noisier and rumblier too, though not too bad in the cabin. But uh, you need these tyres, trust me, in these kind of conditions they become a huge necessity. The Discovery Sport has received a 5-star Euro NCAP crash rating and besides a whole host of standard safety equipment on board, it also has a pedestrian airbag. It is available in a 235bhp 2.0-litre petrol variant, but the car with me is the one that we will get for sure the 2.2-litre SD4 diesel with 186 PHP. The same block is available with a slightly more fuel-efficient 147 BHP version. That's the 2.2 TD4. Now my car had the optional 9-speed auto box. The car drives very well and handling is assured and solid. The 9-speed gearbox also works well, though I would be curious to get my hands on the 6-speed manual too. Out here on the snow, traction has been pretty good and yes, terrain response has been kicking in all through. The clamshell bonnet, the typical grille up front and also a very typical Land Rover kind of headlamp signature. Now, all of this was too much like the Evoque for some people. The first time we saw the Discovery Sport, there was some criticism that, hang on, like Audi, are all these SUVs now starting to look too much like each other? 
Having spent some time with the car today, I'm glad to tell you that a little bit of its individuality does come to the fore now. It does have a different stance. We've been seeing a lot of them on the road, some of the other guys who've been driving them. So it does have its own characteristic. And it's of course this particular element back here, which really is different to the rest. It's not straight like the old Discovery. It doesn't have anything to do with the uh, Freelander either. And it kind of rides high at the back too. So it gives it a sense of sportiness, agility, and a very different kind of profile to some of the other cars, which do tend to look a little straighter and therefore a little bit bigger too. The car will arrive in India only around August 2015. It is likely to arrive in its 2.2 liter SD4 Avtar and will be made at the JLR plant in Pune and will primarily take on the Audi Q5 and BMW X3 besides the Mercedes-Benz ML250. Expect pricing in the 40 to 45 lakh rupee territory. We do have to slip into a very short break here on CNB right now, but remember that our viewers' choice contest is still on. So with the new year, you could have yourself your favorite new car or bike. All you have to do is vote for it. Make sure it wins. Here are all the nominees once again. A quick reminder how you can vote and then join us after a short break. Mobile presents NDTV Car and Bike Awards 2015 in its 10th edition is giving you a chance to own your favorite bike. All you have to do is vote for the CNB Viewer's Choice Two-Wheeler of the Year. CNB 1, Bajaj Discover 150F. CNB 2, Hero Splendor iSmart. CNB 3, Honda Activa 125. CNB 4, Mahindra Gusto. CNB 5, Suzuki Jigsa. CNB 6, Suzuki Let's. CNB 7, TVS Scooty Zest. CNB 8, TVS Star City Plus. CNB 9, Vespa S. To vote, SMS CNB, a space, and your option to 56388 or log on to ndtv.com CNB awards. Win with CNB. Vote for the CNB Viewer's Choice Car of the Year. CNB 10, Datsun Go. CNB 11, Fiat Aventura. CNB 12, Honda City. CNB 13, Honda Mobilio. CNB 14, Hyundai i20. CNB 15, Maruti Suzuki Sierra. CNB 16, Tata Zest. To vote, SMS CNB a space and your option to 56388 or log on to ndtv.com CNB awards. Win with CNB. Now it's been great getting back onto the SUV trail with the Discovery Sport and it's gotten me into the mood. Now a few days ago I got the chance to spend some time with another SUV that is coming to India finally I should say in 2015. There's been a big delay from Fiat Chrysler and making that announcement with the Jeep brand, quintessential SUV brand and uh, you've had the chance to see some of those stories from us on the program before but now let's talk about the flagship that will start things off for Jeep in India and that is the Grand Cherokee. The much awaited and much anticipated debut of the rugged 4x4 Jeep brand in India has been consistently pushed ahead. Now, finally, we can confirm that the company will begin its India story before the end of 2015. There will be around 15 dealers, which will likely double a year later. Jeep promises to arrive with two direct imports for starters the Wrangler that you see on your screens, and this. The flagship of the brand is the Grand Cherokee, and when it arrives, it will surely be the one that the company will expect more from by way of the attention that it will generate, and perhaps the sales too. But given the delay in getting Jeep here, it will need to take on some pretty tough competition. At the top end of the luxury SUV market or the premium SUV market, especially with the Indian context in mind, it's important to have a lot of presence. And so good looks certainly do become pretty, pretty major. And uh, what you're seeing here is the new face, so to speak, from Jeep that uh, was introduced a few years ago. This is the facelifted version of the Grand Cherokee. So it does have the new LED signature light that's been thrown in. Of course, that's a top-end feature, but again, I expect that to come to India. Lots of chrome up front, and this is again a signature Jeep grille, big Jeep badge on top over here. Gives the car a very distinct look as well, I have to say, and because this is the high end, you see a fair amount of chrome thrown into the bumper, and also, when you come around to the side, the mirrors, as well as this bit of skirting down here at the bottom, 
all of that has chrome, chrome door handles. You know that in India we love all of that, don't we? So from the style statement point of view, there's plenty that's thrown in that implies high end. And you've also got a panoramic roof if uh, all of this wasn't enough to impress you. The Summit variant of the Grand Cherokee is top-of-the-line stuff. Of course, in the 4x4 variant, you also have the Performance SRT model, but never mind that for now. It's a pretty ample-sized boot, and the tailgate does shut by itself. It's an auto door, and you also have similar sort of styling and LED treatment done back here, which kind of complements what you saw up front. I did mention top-end variant, so there you go. There's the proof of that. Summit is the uh, top trim. You, of course, have Laredo, which is the entry level, and then uh, also a couple of other variants in the middle. But we're not sure yet what's going to come to India. My money would be on the Summit trim. Lots of chrome in the back, once again, to keep in uh, touch with the kind of styling you've seen around the sides and the front of the car, too. The variants in between are the Limited and Overland, by the way. But like we said, it is likely we get just a Summit trim. Inside, it means that you have a light palette and pretty much every feature from that panoramic sunroof down to a Harman Kardon sound system, navigation and Bluetooth all covered. The car's seats are ample and seating position, though commanding and high, is by no means difficult to access. Very comfy seats, in fact, we have to say, front and back. What's new for the 2014 model year on the car is an all-new gearbox option. It's the H-Speed ZF Automatic. Yes, it has been co-developed with ZF and it's now made by Chrysler here in the US uh, at its Indiana plant. And uh, the reason I'm talking about it is not just because it's new, but it also enhances the performance. You get a lot more of a sporty feel and uh, there is a sport mode thrown in for good measure as well, which really lets you rev the uh, 5.7 liter engine. And uh, the other point, you know, I do expect it to show up on the cars that uh, come to India because remember, we are getting completely built imports and so, which is why you'd expect a lot of the top end equipment to come in. And the good news is that it can be mated to the three liter diesel as well. And so, which is the other reason I expect that we will see it there. The engine we do have is the very juicy Monster V8. 360 horses and a massive 530 Nm of torque. The Hemi engine is a beast and it's mated beautifully to that 8-speed that we talked about already. Engine options with the Summit trim include the 3.6-litre 290bhp V6 Pentastar and the 3-litre Eco Diesel with 240 horsepower. We expect these two engines in India, quite frankly, and maybe even just the diesel. The car with Siddharth has the top-end and latest Quadra Drive 2 four-wheel drive system. It has an electronic limited slip differential, which can send up to 100% of the engine's torque to the wheels if needed. There is also a select train system, very much like Land Rover's terrain response. The price point expected hovers at about the 55 lakh rupee mark, though this may change next year depending on Jeep's final trim and variant strategy and currency fluctuations. The car offers a few customization options, although we don't think most of this will make it to India. While we drove the 5.7-litre Hemi, we also managed to jump into this car, the very hot and fiery-looking Trailhawk 2 concept. Now, it's always fun to drive a concept car, and the blood-orange car totally got Siddharth, as did its awesome, rugged yet sporty styling cues, the SRT-inspired hood, the 17-inch aluminium wheels wrapped in monstrous 35-inch Mickey Thompson off-road tyres. Wow! Now, it's not often that you get to drive a concept vehicle, and so, of course, there is that thrill for me when I got into this car, but the primary intention, really, was to check out the 3-litre diesel engine that's under the hood of this car, because, of course, that's the one that's relevant to our market. So, uh, while, we're, while we're at it, why not run you through the specs on that engine as well, because, uh, well, you know what, most of you care about that one too, don't you? So, okay then, before we wrap this up, let's show you those specs, shall we? The engine actually feels more powerful than what it is, 240 bhp output. The engine is made by VM Motori Cento, an Italian engine maker that is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Fiat Group, of course. It's got the looks, it's got the grunt, and frankly, even though we could very well do just fine with the smaller engines, 
two wheel drive and base trims but given that it's going to be a direct import and that it has to compete not with Toyota or Mitsubishi but instead with the likes of BMW, Audi or Land Rover expect only top end variants. Jeep will also launch the 4x4 Wrangler as we said but what we will watch more closely is what happens with the subsequent products that arrive starting 2017. Shared compact platforms with Fiat will likely see cars like the Renegade subcompact SUV being made at Fiat's Ranjangao facility outside Pune. Hmm, now that is what will really excite this market, isn't it? I've been driving along this fjord that's behind me and it's been absolutely stunning. I've got just about maybe half an hour or 45 minutes of daylight left, so I want to make the most of it. I'm going to get back on the road with the Discovery Sport, but you've got to react to what you've seen on the program today. Tell me what you thought of the car and everything else, and you know how to get in touch with me. Please remember to wear your seat belts, make a New Year resolution if you will, wear your helmets as well if you're on a two-wheeler. And once again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year from all of us to you. I will see you now in the New Year.